The views expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to another edition of Insights. I'm Bethany Ricciardi. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm also joined here today with William Webster, a local conservation officer. How are you doing today? I'm excellent, thank awesome. you. Awesome, thank you so much for being here. So do you want to start off by just telling me a little bit about what your role is as a conservation officer with the DNR? Well, it's, it's fun. Okay, serving as a law enforcement officer within the DNR, we cover an aspect of things that's very broad compared to just general police work. And uh, we not only enforce uh, wildlife conservation orders and, and things to do with wildlife, but we also enforce general criminal law. And that can go all the way from you know, domestic violence calls to pulling people over for speeding on the wow. highway. So it's very broad. It changes with the seasons. Okay. And so every all four seasons we have here in Michigan, we get a huge change in what we do. So as soon as you think you're getting bored of working snowmobiles, you're jumping <laughs> into fish runs and the ice mountains. So you're getting on four wheelers and watching fawns and different things pop from the uh, from nature. This must be a really great place to have that type of job then. Well, Northeast Michigan has a lot to offer. I call it the hidden gem mm. because there's a lot of things here for people to do recreational activities and there's a lot of land to do it on. So how often would you say that you actually deal with calls that involve wildlife? Well, it, again, that's going to depend on the season. Um, the spring of the year we deal with a lot more because you have the newer animals. You got fawns and cub bears and things that are coming out and so people start to see them and they, they make calls. But then in the summertime it dies down a little bit and then in the fall we get very busy in the fall with the hunting seasons that start. So what are some of the calls? Are they concerns? Are they questions? Most of them in the springtime are concerns because people think they see a fawn that's orphaned or they see a cub bear that's orphaned and the biggest thing we try to tell them is just leave it alone. You know, leave wildlife in the wildlife. Don't touch it. That's the big thing. Don't touch it. Leave it there. It's illegal to possess. And then we tell them just to leave it alone and let nature take its course. So are there any specific rules and regulations that you learned when you became an officer that you try to implement every day in the wild? Well, it's hard to say every day, but we have a lot of regulations. Um, there's Public Act 451 of 1994, which is where we get a lot of our rules from that we enforce and it's, it's pages long. Mm. And there's a lot of them that relate to wildlife. So we have to make sure that we interpret that correctly and to give it to the, the public the information correctly also. And the big one is, is, it is it's basically it's illegal to possess any wildlife. So if you see it there, leave it there and leave it alone. Are there any, you know, situations that you come into where maybe someone didn't follow the rules and they kind of, you know, maybe literally bring you a deer or something and be like, here, help it, or, I mean, have you ever run into something like that? We do. We do run into that, and it's, it's an unfortunate situation, and uh, I'm sure later on in the segment we'll touch more on that, but, you know, touching wildlife and taking it out of its natural area is not beneficial for that animal. And so the best thing to do is just leave it there where you found it. If you do have questions or concerns, to call, contact the DNR. And you can look that up on the DNR website. You can call your local dispatch center. Awesome. So maybe, what are some of the citations? If you do, um, you know, have to implement the law and give out citations, what do you find um, maybe is your most typical one or one that you run into? Again, that depends on the season. Okay. Okay. In the, in the springtime, you know, it's usually the possession of an animal that you're not supposed to have. But then as you work into the fall, it's hunting related. Mm. So that can range from a whole gamut. It can go from a hunter safety violation for people not wearing their hunter's orange out in the woods to not having a, a, light, a legal tag to be in the woods to hunt and using the wrong equipment. So using a firearm during bow season or vice versa and uh, just hunting in the wrong seasons or hunting after hours. So what are some of the consequences um, after giving the citation? Is it usually just a payment or? 
That does depend on your court. Okay. Every court in the state's a little bit different on how they handle that. Some of them are payable tickets. Other ones you have to go in front of the judge. So how would you say that you keep the environment safe? I mean, it seems like you're definitely on the wildlife side. So is there anything specific that you find yourself or situations you've run into? For the years that I've been working with the state, the biggest thing I've found for the public is just having the presence of an officer. It's like driving down the road. If you see a state trooper sitting on the side of the road, everybody slows down. Mm. And the same thing with us. If you see us out, you know, people are, start to ask questions. They start to second guess themselves. And what we want to do as the DNR is to be available for them. We want people to ask us questions. We want us to contact us. We have our DNR service centers. Okay, a lot of local COs will give phone numbers out for people to contact them directly. Awesome. And the best thing to do for us is educate. Educate the public so they know how to properly do things. And it's better to ask than to guess. I like that. <laughs> so are you, are you really out in places like this, state parks, different things like that? People might just run into you guys? We try to be out as often as possible. Awesome. Um, we work a flex schedule. We're not scheduled on hours that we have to work. So we pick the hours in that day that we work. So we try to best benefit what the public's going to do. You know, in the summertime, you might work a lot more evenings because that's when most of the people are gonna be out recreating. But that changes with every season again. So now I have to ask, which is your favorite season to work? I like them all. Yeah? I do, because <laughs> like I said, they change. Right. And you start to get tired of dealing with the summertime and the hot weather and everything. And then the spring, the fall starts to come in and it cools down and you get that little reprieve. So you said educate is a big thing. Are there any specific um, resources that you would suggest to the public, maybe a website or anywhere that they can look and maybe look at those rules and regulations that you try so hard to implement? We do, and on our DNR website, which is michigan.gov backslash DNR, we have a whole list of everything from fisheries to, to forestry to wildlife to law enforcement. It's on there, and that's a great resource for people to start with. Another one is we have education classes, our hunter safety education classes, boating safety classes, ORV safety classes. Wow. So there's different classes that are offered for the public to take, and most of those are free. And it seems like all different seasons matching exactly. up. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here again today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. And stay tuned because when we come back, we'll be here with more wildlife experts.